are queens. If she breathes, she's a fuck! The Dark Crystal is easily one of my favorite movies of all time. Now I could just leave it at that, but I can't. This movie is more than just a simple, oh it's my favorite certification. <laughs> no, no. This movie was directed by Jim Henson and Frank Oz and is mostly puppets. This movie is both the most fascinating and yet the most frustrating movie I've ever seen. And I still love it. I'll admit this may not be some movie that everyone can get into. As I said, it is kind of frustrating. There's a lot that doesn't make sense and you'll see what I'm talking about in a bit. But I fail to see how a movie like this can at least be deemed fascinating by the general public. Of course, I may also just be in the minority here. I'm what the cool kids would call biased. So let's try and not be and look at the Dark Crystal as a whole. Also, spoilers ahead. But uh, whatever, it doesn't really matter. We start things off with a narration explaining things. Because Star Wars got to the whole let's explain things through a text crawl thing before anyone else can, or at least they're the most popular, so therefore anyone else who dares to try it is obviously stealing, other fantasy movies don't have that luxury. They have to come up with other clever ways to explain their bullshit universes, and The Dark Crystal shows us everything by telling us everything. And not very good at that. A thousand years ago, this land was green and good. Well, that doesn't sound all that impressive. Seriously, if you're going to create some new fantasy universe, at least try to come up with more clever ways of catching the audience up. Don't just explain something as green and good. Now, blue and fantastic, that still sounds stupid. Work on your adjectives. Anyway, to sum up what this dude is rambling on about, there is a crystal, and it cracked a thousand years ago and formed two races, the Mystics and the Nightmare Fuel, also known as Skeksis. Personally, I'm not at all phased by these lizard birds, but maybe that's because I've seen this movie a lot and I'm used to such abominations of creativity. But don't worry, there's plenty of unsettling looking characters to be disturbed by. At least the movie has that going for it. Across a different neck of the planet, we are introduced to the Mystics, the good guys of the story, and the caretakers of our main character, Jen. He's a Gelfling, a made-up creature that's half-elf, half, elf, half uh, Barbie doll. Also, a fun fact about Jen, he was originally going to be blue in homage to the Hindu god Rama. The reason I 100% believe this is because old Jimbo forgot to finish painting him. Thought you could slip past me, but I'm too smart for you, Jimmy. I got eyes like a hawk-like bird, okay? I don't miss anything. Damn it. So Jen, it seems, is running late to his master's death, but makes it just in time for a last-minute request because who could say no to that face? So Papa Mystic keeps it real and tells Jen that he is actually the chosen one and must find a crystal shard from the all-knowing Algra. He must find this shard before the three suns converge again because if not, the Skeksis will rule forever and it seems he only has a few days. Well gee, better late than never, huh Grandpa? Also, you got any late library books you want me to return? You don't want the lady giving you a dirty look from behind the desk? You know, you dying is no excuse. We all gotta repair debt someday. Also, back the heck up. What do you mean I only have a couple of days until the world ends? I mean, really? A couple of days? You've been around for how long and you never once thought you should probably plan this better? Poor Jen doesn't know what cruel and smelly things are out there in the real world. I'm not saying treat him like Harry Potter and tell him he's gonna die one day because he's the chosen one, but maybe a little, oh by the way, would have been sufficient enough. What have you been doing all this time? I should have told you these things long ago. But wouldn't you know, a thousand years just flies by. Okay, while the Master Mystic is explaining Jen's quest in as little detail as possible, the Skeksis leader is feeling pretty not going to be in this movie long as well. I am the Emperor. Typical political leaders, always lying. So after the Skeksis Emperor commits not feeling good, and the Mystic Master straight up Yoda's on out of there, Jen must begin his quest. A quest he hasn't been training his whole life for, just found out about five minutes beforehand, and only it was given directions to his first stop by following the sun. A badly planned quest, but Jen's nonetheless. I'm not ready to go alone. That's the smartest thing he's going to say all movie. Alright. 
alone then. And that's the dumbest. Meanwhile, over in the Skeksis land, the Aristocreeps are discussing who should be crowned the next emperor. Because after a thousand years of ruling the planet, you guys haven't come up with any electoral system. Again, what have you been doing all this time? It's time to make my move. Well, one Skeksy decides to take charge. This is Chamberlain, the best character. He's slimy, disgusting, annoying as shit, and is just wonderful. Get back, spithead! He also does this mm, sound that makes you laugh and yet creeps you out too. I hate your whimper. Funny joke! He's great and almost becomes emperor until this asshole steps in the way and challenges Chamberlain for the throne. Hmm. Trial by stone. Oh, I guess you do have a way of deciding the next emperor. You know, when you're inconsistent in your universe between sequels, that's one thing. But when you're inconsistent between scenes, you may have a problem. Well, fine. At least we get to see a badass sword fight between these badass looking puppets. Or, the most powerful seat in the land is given to whoever can hit a rock the hardest. Yeah, okay. So through some bullshit law, Chamberlain is then stripped of his skexiness and is told to heck off. I'm pretty sure you guys are bullshitting your way through this. Call it a hunch. As this is happening, the crystal calls. No, really, it shows Jen finding his way. And this upsets the Skeksis. Rightfully so, but why does the crystal show them this? Does it not want the good guys to win? Does it not want to be healed after being broken for a thousand years? I'd like an explanation that's more than just nothing you know. Whatever, the Skeksis send out more nightmare fuel to stop Jen. That line was probably meant as a joke, but let's be honest, Jen does look pretty disgusting and uncanny looking. I mean, come on, you got any other scary looking characters to drop on this movie? Are you afraid of me? Think I'm going to eat you? Yeah, that's the stuff. Also, what? This is Algra, the almighty, all-knowing character Jen has been tasked with finding to get the crystal shard from. Ugh, oh, finally. Maybe she'll clear some things up so Jen, and the audience, can finally understand everything. Suns? Moons? Stars? Yes! The angle of eternity? A thousand years ago, there was a great conjunction. I was there. Three suns lined up. That's when the crystal cracked. That's when the Skeksis appeared. Anything could happen. The whole world might burn up. Ask what the Great Conjunction is. What's the Great Conjunction? The Great Conjunction is the end of the world. Oh, the beginning? I don't think I'm asking much when I say, Hey, what's going on? I'm confused. And that's seriously a major problem with this movie. It doesn't explain things that need to be explained. We don't know anything about the crystal, only that it was cracked. Okay, why? How did it crack? Why did it cause the Skeksis and Mystics to exist? Why is it that Jen is the chosen one to bring balance to the Force? Is there a prophecy? Is there somewhere where it says, it is written only Jen can defeat Ganon? I know it's difficult for the audience to know the history and the ways this universe works, but there are better ways of explaining everything. It's been said that the original cut was even more confusing and that it had to be re-edited to make it more understandable. Well, they did a fine job, didn't they? As much as I'll defend this movie, I can't defend its sloppy storytelling. It's distracting and it really takes you out of the movie. I won't say it's the worst example of bad storytelling, but it's still not very good. The one scene that can show just how contrived this storytelling is, is the scene when Jen discovers the correct shard. He just blows into his magic flute and boom, it glows. How did he know to do that? And how is it he's sure that just because it glows, it's the right one? No idea. And there should be no excuse for that. But hey, whoa, look at the cool looking solar system. Whoa, isn't that freaking awesome? Like, it's so confusing. What does it do? Pfft, who cares? Whoa. So Jen finds the right crystal and in the nick of time, as it seems the creepy crab monsters are here to take him in. But Jen gets away just in time. Seymour, the house is on fire. 
No, mother, it's just the northern lights. And now that Jen has the crystal, the mystics are on their way as well. Hey, how come they didn't leave with Jen? So Jen ponders what he must do with the crystal shard now that he has it. Again, he has no idea where to bring it, and he only has so little time until the end of the world. Again, stellar job, old man. Oh, now I get it. It was the Skeksis who cracked the crystal. Pfft. Thanks for clearing that up. Even though... You know, it was explicitly stated that the crystal cracking is what caused the Skeksis to appear in the first place, so... <laughs> but Jen is interrupted by a build-up to a jump scare. Oh, <laughs> look at the little puppy. Oh, he's the most normal-looking thing in this movie. Aww. Oh, look, he's got an owner, and Jesus, fuck! This is Kira, the other last of the Gelflings. Yeah, remember when it was said that Jen is the last of his species? Untrue, as it turns out, there's another Gelfling running around this godforsaken planet. Well, I guess I can't be too shocked. Anytime there is supposed to be a last of a kind, that's not always the case. Superman isn't the last of Krypton. Luke isn't the last Jedi. Toy Story 3 isn't the last Toy Story movie. When will the lies end? Well, okay, Jen explains his situation to Kira, and she agrees to help him on his quest. Meanwhile, the Skeksis are having dinner. This scene is so pointless, and yet it's so hilarious. It's one of the best parts of the movie. Just kind of sad when you think about it. Yeah, you know your movie's in trouble when a pointless scene like this is the best part. Because why watch the whole movie when you can literally just watch this one scene on YouTube? I'll tell you why. Because this scene doesn't have Chamberlain, and everybody must know about Chamberlain, goddammit! Algor is brought to the Skeksis, and they realize they must send out the Crystal Bats to survey the area to find Jen. Could have done that before. So one finds Jen and the gang, but is shot down by Kira. They go to her village where she's been living her whole life, and they celebrate. The world is going to end any day now and you don't have time. And then the crab monsters find them and destroy the village. Well, now they are back on their way and... I wish I'd never heard of this shard. <sighs> and congratulations, Jen. You are now the worst main character I have ever seen in any movie ever. I sure do love our main character and how he refuses to help because he has no clue what the hell he should be doing. It makes it all worth it in the end because we never gave up. Well, he did, but we didn't. You know, Luke Skywalker was forced into his adventure too, and he never gave up. Not for another 30 years, but he never gave up. He also had loving friends and a mentor who gave him explicit instructions on how to achieve his goal, but... He never gave up. Yeah, who am I kidding? This isn't Jen's fault. I'm sorry I ever dissed your disgusting uncanny face. Well, Kira and Jen come across an ancient ruin and find out they have to get the crystal shard to the crystal in the Skeksis castle. Again, would have been nice to know that before, but there's no time for that. Hey, look, it's Chamberlain. Stay! No, stay! Stay and friend! He tries to talk Jen and Kira into giving him the shard so that they can all work together and put the whole mass genocide thing behind them. No! Please wait! Please make peace! Yeah, good call. So Jin and Kira make it to Casa del Creepy and... Oh no, we must save the podlings. They don't. Wings. I don't have wings. Of course not. You're a boy. Asked and answered. So the little humans pretending to be the main characters sneak into the castle and try to find their way to the crystal. They are stopped by Chamberlain. How he caught up to them is not the biggest question this movie raises. I'm honestly over it. And Jen is down for the count, and Kira is brought to the other Skeksis. I bring you, Gelfling. I, I have done this. I have caught her. I bring you the Gelfling. I was wounded. I suffered horrible searing pain. The on my life has left me scarred and deformed. And well, the rest of the movie just... It just raises more questions. 
Kira is taken to the lab to be stripped of her essence, because the crystal can do that. But she escapes, and as Skeksy falls to his death and is burned alive while on the other side of the planet, the same thing happens to a mystic. What I love about this scene is just how not phased everybody is. It's like, oh well, it really do be like that. Seriously, your buddy just got vaporized. At least show some emotion more than just... nothing. Whatever, so Jen and Kira make their way to the crystal room on their own while the Skeksis are getting ready for the convergence. I guess the other guy didn't need to be there. Oh well, we'll never know. And thus, the climax begins. Will Jen get the shard back into its place, or will the Skeksis rule forever? Hmm... I mean, the trailer did show the castle crumbling, so I have my theories. Heal the crystal. Kira! Ah! Oh no! Yep, Kira's dead. She was killed. Straight stabbed in the back. Good lord, who knew puppets could be so violent? Oh, and Jen saves the day by actually doing something. And thus, the world is saved. Hey, I do wonder. That was a pretty convenient crack there. Like, the crystal shard just slid right in there. Doesn't even look like it was cracked. Looked like it was strategically picked out. Hell, it doesn't even fit. Hmm. Very convenient. Let me guess. We'll never know, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah that's what I thought. But wait, now that the crystal is restored, that means the Skeksis and the Mystics are made one. As it turns out, the Skeksis and the Mystics were two of the same species, and they were split when the crystal cracked. And now that the crystal is back to normal, they can finally be one again. One shitty effect. Hoo hoo, got him. Ah, it's beautiful. Just wonderful. I love it. I love how unfinished they look. Oh, it's great. Oh, it's great. Mwah. Mwah. Who approved this? I'll admit that it's a cool idea having, you know, the evil and the good of the world be inseparable, so then, you know, one can't really exist. I think that's pretty profound. It would have been better if maybe we had the mystics on screen longer, we knew how the crystal cracked, and why everything became the way it did, and all the other important stuff. But you tried. You tried. And so, the weird Groot spirits fly off into space, I think, and the world is green and good once more. <sighs> I'm gonna be quite honest. This may not be the greatest movie of all time. Hell, it's actually kind of bad at times. The story is a mess, the characters are boring, the mythos of the universe is just incomprehensible, at the end of the day, I have to say, this movie's kind of bad. And that, well, I can't really recommend it. However, while I know it's dumb, I still really love it. Let me explain. Sure, there are things wrong with this movie. Like, really wrong. However, I'm not here to say that because it's bad doesn't mean that there aren't elements to it that I love. The visuals are breathtaking. I love the puppetry and the matte paintings and just how the world looks. The world freaks me out. I would not want to be barefoot in this world. It's so detailed. Sure, it sometimes looks fake, but the fakeness kind of adds to the charm. The music. Oh my god, the music is beautiful. I never hear anyone talk about the score, and I really wish they did. It sounds wonderful. The music adds so much weight to a lot of the scenes. Hell, I love just listening to the soundtrack. I don't even need to be watching the movie. It's that good. Even just individual scenes, like the dinner scene, the scene right after when Jen and Kira are just on the boat. Scenes that weren't important to the plot, but nice scenes nonetheless. However, good music and great visuals and good scenes sprinkled in doesn't automatically mean a good movie. They definitely help the movie, but nothing that makes it impervious to criticism. Heck, even if it was great, it still wouldn't be impervious. Everything can and should be criticized. Whether or not you like something doesn't protect the movie from being bad. And this movie, no matter how much I'll defend it, is not perfect. But then again, neither am I. I'm a flawed individual, and I have my weaknesses that make me imperfect, but that's okay. And that's okay here. The Dark Crystal is a flawed and messy movie, and I still love it. I acknowledge it has flaws and encourage those who love to criticize movies to point them out so we can make better products for the future. Who knows? Maybe that prequel that they're making for Netflix may be good. Or maybe it'll be embarrassing. Who can tell? As is, I've always loved this movie for many years, and I feel I'll keep loving it for many years to come. Well, 
I think that's it. So what do you think about the Dark Crystal? Let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll read them. Maybe I won't. And as always, thanks for watching, and uh, go away. Also, thank you for 500 subscribers, and as promised, uh... uh am I shot? Yeah, there I am. Thank you.